All right, guys. We got a no AC RTU that's not communicating with the energy management company. So we're going to climb up on this roof hatch right there, get up to this unit, and see why it's not communicating and doing what it should do. I'll bring you along for the ride. A little bit of a bumpy ride, but it looks like you made it. All right, guys. So here is our unit, RTU number 16, not communicating with the energy management company. So first thing I noticed, it's dead. Nothing happening. I don't hear an indoor blower going. Uh, you'll notice our trap down here. Completely dry, mostly around it. It did just kind of sprinkle here a little bit ago, so that explains some of the moisture on the on the rooftop right there. But see right here, there's nothing but dust in there. So um, I'm gonna come over here to this little tiny disconnect. And I'll bet you it's off. Yeah, it's off. So before I just go turning that back on, I want to try to figure out why it's off. Maybe somebody was here previously to do some repairs. Looks like there was some, a small fire. That's not the original transformer, so I'm betting that that transformer probably caught fire and uh, they had to, somebody had to come in and replace that. So not sure how long ago that is or was. Power's on. The wind's picking up out here, so I hope you can hear me well. Let's go over to our control board. It looks like the control board's coming on. Let's go through its startup sequence and see what happens. See, our indoor blower motor should be kicking on in a second here. Usually that comes on first. There it is. And then in the end, it'll shut off. Now this unit sits above our receiving area, so it is pretty warm down there, so it should fire right up in stage two cooling, I would imagine, but uh, we'll probably end up having to call our energy management co company. There's our energy management board right there. It is a Linux board, but the energy management company can communicate with it. Um, I'm a pretty big fan of these boards because I like how easily you can bypass them to test the components. Now. With this control board, you can go through those dip switches and test every single component basically on this control board. Uh, but what I like to do sometimes is just go right through that energy management board because if I can bypass it, if I can just manually jumper those relays, see the heat, cool, all those relays right there. If I can put a jumper on those and make sure that that board is sending a signal to that board and then whatever component I'm bypassing fires up, that makes my job just a little bit easier. Whereas if I, if I go right to that board, then I'm not real sure if both boards are communicating with each other. I hope that makes sense. Um, let's look around here. You guys are probably looking at that awesome, awesome rat's nest right there. Now, there was some repairs done to this unit, obviously. So, still no fault codes. Looks like it's gonna start up and do something, I hope. Um, real quick, what I wanted to show some of you guys who may have not ever seen one of these before. These Linux units are a humid control unit. That's just an option that they have to control humidity in the building. And that's our three-way valve right there. And really, it's, it, all it is is a smaller evaporator, or what I call a secondary evaporator, sitting in front of the, the main evaporator. And 
all that does when that three-way valve is activated, it just routes hot discharge gas to that secondary evaporator. So as the air is going through that evaporator, before it goes to the cool part of the evaporator, that air passes over this warm secondary evaporator, which you think of it almost as a condenser because it's routing hot discharge gas to this secondary evaporator. And once that air hits that secondary evaporator, it warms up, and then it goes, you know, of course, through the... Uh, through the main evaporator, the colder evaporator, and then it goes down to the building. Now warming that air up, of course, that just keeps the unit running long enough so we can pull all that moisture out of the air. Hmm, didn't notice that a minute ago, so that's just hanging there. That probably goes to something, I'm guessing. That also probably goes to something, so um, I'm assuming that's why we haven't fired up in cool mode yet. So I think we're going to have to bust out our meter and see what's wrong with that uh, compressor. See if there is actually a problem or if somebody just decided to start pulling wires out of stuff. Now, real quick, I opened up the book to kind of give you a better view of this humiditrol idea that I'm talking about. If you'll notice right there, there's that uh, what I refer to as a secondary evaporator. I guess it's called technically called a reheat coil. I should probably learn my words properly, huh? Um, yeah, it's a, it's a really, really simple idea, and it, uh, it does the trick. Now, on some of these units, the unit itself can be programmed to maintain a certain level of humidity, or the energy management company can, through the of course, through their control board, their communication board, they can also control the humidity level of the building. Now, let's go over here. I'll show you right up there if my camera will pick it up. You can see way back here if I can get her to focus there we go back here where my finger is that is our primary or main evaporator and then this little smaller evaporator that is our our reheat coil so pretty simple concept guys all right let me uh, bust out my meter and we are going to start troubleshooting this unit because I should have already been in cool mode well, don't have a call for cooling which really isn't my main problem yet first I need to figure out why my low pressure switch is disconnected and it looks like this hanging uh, little wire that's not connected to anything looks like that goes to an exhaust motor which is probably an optional motor for our economizer um, what I'm gonna do first I'm just going to do a continuity check across our low pressure switch and if that's closed I'm going to reconnect it and fire the unit up. Alright so we don't have any continuity through our low pressure switch so that means we most likely have a low pressure problem. Now sometimes what people will do if you have a failed low pressure switch, they'll just leave that one there and maybe put one on a service port somewhere else. Um, see, like right here. Let me bring you guys up here for the ride. So, right back here, you can see there, that is our abandoned low pressure switch. And right up here on one of the normal service ports right here is another low pressure switch now this one says s87 so I know it's factory uh, so it's it's not like what I thought where somebody would just installed one so our s11 low pressure switch is failed most likely means we have a leak and we have no more refrigerant in the unit and that's probably why somebody shut the unit off so I'm gonna dig around in this unit and see if I can't figure out where that s11 was connected to and then we might have to gauge up to the system all right guys I'm gonna call myself out a little bit on this so this s11 here 
I had to check the manual just to make sure what it was, but if you look real close, which I didn't, if you look real close where it says switch low pressure ambient or AMB. So that is a low ambient kit and that is actually disconnected from our other S11 connector right there. Um, and I just wanted to double check in the manual but as you can see right there, our low ambient pressure switch maintains discharge pressure by, dis by de-energizing the condensing fan when the uh, pressure falls below 240. So when I tested that, the reason why it was open because our pressure is below 240 and it's and it opened up. So it's trying, it, it thinks it's running, I guess, basically, and it wants to build up pressure. So we need to get that pressure up a little bit higher. So I am going to reconnect that and um, see if we can't get something going on here so I am gonna put this into full cool mode with the dip switches up there um, as you see and I bypassed the uh, the communication panel downstairs and just went right to the communication board and put a jumper across cool too but what I didn't like was that my blower came on a little bit later than I wanted it to um, what I'm gonna do Let's come over to my dip switches, turn dip switch shift to the right, and then we're going to do unit test to the right. That'll bring up C01 on this board. And I could do, go into C10, which is first stage cooling. I'm going to go C11 just, to, just for poops and giggles. And that is our full cool mode. Hold the black button down. Now see, that time our indoor blower came on right away. So I don't know if I was improperly bypassing the communication board, but right now our compressor's running, blower's running, condensing fan motor is running, our blower is running, it's going the proper direction. Let me throw this panel back on here. Pressure sounds a little better. The only thing I don't like is how cold this compressor body is. Almost as if it's just pulling back liquid refrigerant. Let's go over here and get a supply temp real quick. Now I know my reading is going to be slightly skewed because I'm taking a supply temp so close to the evaporator, but it is what it is. I mean this is this is a very large building and I don't have access to the ductwork where the air mixes. So we kind of got to do what we can up here. And since I'm so close to the evaporator, I'll probably get uh, you know below 50 supply temp. And again, it's because the air doesn't have time to mix with the air in the vent or downstairs or anything like that. So I'm taking a measurement with a educated idea of what to expect 66 let's let that keep going guys and we'll come back over here and see what kind of amp draw we have on our very loud noisy compressor so we're pulling about six let's find our data tag see what our data tag says we should have there's our data tag Uh, it's saying nine. The camera's picking that up, but it says we should have nine, so six isn't too bad. I really just don't like the sound of that compressor for one, and two, I still don't understand why somebody would have disconnected my low ambient kit. Should have checked that when I was over here the first time. Looks like it doesn't say indoor blower and draw. I got a different hat today. But it works just the same on condensers. 
down to 61. Now our return on this should be close to 80, 82. I had the hatch open. That's leading right down to our receiving area, so there's probably a little bit of heat that escaped since I've been up here. No moisture coming out yet, of course. We're not in dehumidification mode. So I'm gonna let this run for a little bit, guys, see what kind of supply temp I get, and then I'm gonna call the energy management company and just have them communicate with the unit and fire it up and just verify operation. I didn't like how much my compressor was sweating and the noise it was making. So I went ahead and just connected my little Z gauges real quick. Now we're about 80, 85 ambient here right now. It's probably raising up a little bit. It just rained and then the sun came back out. So our, our head pressure is not too terrible. Now that needle is fluctuating. You'll see it kind of bouncing if the camera's picking it up. Now an old guy once told me that when you're testing pressures that close to the compressor, your, your gauge might pulsate a little bit with the compressor as the compressor compresses and the pistons move up and down. But anyway, I'm not too terribly concerned about that condensing pressure. Like I said, we're probably 85, maybe even 90 right about now. Our low pressure, and again, it's a 22 system, our low side, just about a 40 degree evaporator, so a touch above 40 degrees. Double check our supply. We should be below 60 by now. Yeah, 59. 59 supply, so. I still don't know why somebody had this unit turned off and why the S11 low ambient switch was disconnected. Um, that's a mystery to me. Hey guys, just wanted to take a minute and quickly recap that last call we did. Um, I wasn't able to reach the energy management company. Apparently it's five o'clock wherever they are and nobody wants to answer the phone. Uh, I talked to the store manager and she believes the unit was turned off from whoever was out there repairing it last, probably whoever used up all their wire nuts, putting all those wires together. So that's the only thing I can come up with, that the unit was accidentally left off after that repair. But um, I guess make sure your units are on. Alright? I know this wasn't groundbreaking material today, guys, but uh, hope you enjoyed it. Like and subscribe. Alright? We'll see you on the next one.